It's my dad's fault. He ruined me. You see, my first memories are of life at Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii, where he was stationed. And from the time we moved back to the land of coal and steel, I had a deep desire to return to a life in an island paradise. Later, as an adult lying on my back and seeing stars, because I had just slipped on the ice and banged my head on in our driveway, I decided it was time to take action. Briefly, I lived in Southern California, but ultimately we ended up on a little island in North Carolina where I could still drive home to see my family. Besides singing in the car to pass the hours, we also used to play the game of what would you do if you won X amount of dollars in the lottery? The amount would change, forcing different answers. My mom loved to travel, but as she got older, that got harder. One of my regular answers, if I won big, was to provide mom with a private jet and crew that would be at her beck and call to take her anywhere she wanted to go in the world. Have you ever played that game? What was your answer? As I read the parable for this week, I imagined a different scenario, a new take on the old game, if you will. What if you woke tomorrow morning and found beside your bed a bag filled with nearly 130 pounds of gold? Maybe you start fantasizing about all the things you could buy, or perhaps you consider an early retirement. But then you discover there was also a note tucked in with the gold. It read, I'm leaving you with over $3 million worth of gold to mind till I get back. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Love God. Well, that would certainly change the game, wouldn't it? Now, what would you do with the gold? In our parable, three different people get bags of gold. Five bags for one, two bags for another, and one bag for the third person. That last guy looks at the bag of gold and freaks out. If I lose this bag of gold, God is going to do something terrible to me on the day of accounting. So, he buried the gold in his backyard and watched a world in need continue to suffer as he sat in his pew, waiting pensively for God to get back. Ah, but the other two, when they saw others in need, had compassion on them, just as they had seen their master do. They provided health care centers for those with medical, mental, addiction, or counseling needs. When others saw this generosity, they pitched in their support, and the impact of the seed money was multiplied. They saw victims of abuse, homeless people, and refugees, and others in need of a safe place, and created shelters and training centers for them. Others, seeing their generosity, were inspired to create even more places of refuge, and so it continued. They fed the hungry at food banks and clothed the naked at distribution centers. Every act of kindness inspired others to join in on the mercy train. In the end, they had blessed others not with just the value of their bags of gold, but with all the love and mercy their sacrifice had inspired in others. When the master returned, the one bag guy (laughs) ran out into his backyard, dug up his his now dirty old bag, and brought it to the master. Woohoo! It was over. He hadn't lost the gold. But in the parable, the master takes the gold but kicks the lazy, complacent guy out of the house. What about you guys, Jesus asked the other two. I'm loosely paraphrasing here. They gave Jesus first five empty bags and then two empty bags. They looked at him with eagerness, one grabbing his left hand and the other his right. They led him from hospitals to rehabilitation centers, to women's shelters, to homeless shelters, to food banks. And as the day wore on, the master just got more and more excited. Finally, he turns to the two men, bursting with love and joy, and says, Well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. I started this story with a hypothetical bag of gold beside your bed. 
Let's end it by considering that the bag of gold in the parable is not a literal bag of gold. It's all the blessings and responsibilities which God has entrusted to you and to me. So the real question is, what will we have to show the Master on the day of accounting?